Yo, what's good, YouTube? This is Jay from TNJ, and welcome back to the New Orleans Kings franchise as we continue season four after the opener. We did beat the Angels, and here we continue that three game series to open it up. And I want to take a look at some of our young guys here as we look at Justin Thompson at the plate, looking to come through in the bottom of the ninth inning. But that is going to be a ground out as we hop straight into the action. That brings up Moncada, who is going to hit right in the middle of the lineup. I'm hitting him at two right now as he flies out as that one takes us into extra innings. And now we move into extras. Here is one of our veterans on the team. Here is Jake Cave at the plate. He is one for four in this game. Coming off of a season where he hit 325 as he goes to opposite field. And that one gets through the infield. And that one does skip two left. And Cave is on his horse. And he will make it to second here. So now we have a man on second base here with one out in the bottom of the 10th. So that brings up Corey Lee, who I'm looking for him to have a huge year. And he swings and misses at some high heat. Justin Anderson gets his first strikeout. As that brings up Corey Dickerson. And I honestly signed Corey Dickerson because of that clutch rating. He reminds me a lot of what Scooter Jeanette used to be. Remember when he was clutching the playoffs? I think that Corey Dickerson can get there. So that brings up Nate Barron, who hits the ball up the middle, and that one sneaks through. Mike Trout comes up throwing, and it's off. And that one will be a walk-off here for Nate Barron as Jake Cave crosses the plate. And we start out this episode with a win. And just looking at Carlos Santana in the game, he had, he had a homer. One for four. We get the victory, seven to six. I'm really looking to really beat up on the Angels because they won the division last year. We really need to send a message. So let's move on to more games in May, and we look at the Cleveland Indians now, who remember they made a couple of moves last offseason. They signed Kyle Schwarber and also Christian Yelich to their outfield, so they look a whole lot differently, and they're one of those AL teams who are, who's really going to be good. I mean, they're going to be really, really solid, along with the White Sox, Yankees, all those teams. I mean, they're all really good. So now we start out the bottom of the 13th now. Another extra inning game. As here's Jay Cave at the plate once again. He hits one down the right field line. Jay Cave has turned out to be one of our better hitters as he looks like he does not round first ahead to second, but moves the runner over to third. So now we got guys on the corners here. And now the next batter comes up. This is Corey Dickerson. Like I said, that clutch rating. Let's see what he can do. So here he is. He hits a little blooper left field, and it gets over the shortstop. And they are going to come up throwing home, and it's going to be a slide in safe. And Moncada scores the game winner in this one. We kind of retreated back to third base after that. I did not know if the shortstop was going to get to it. But another walk off as we move from series to series, as we try to hop through the month of April, a good six to five win here. But we get some news coming out of that game. Michael Brantley is going to be hurt. Fractured shin out one to two months. So I'm going to put him on the 60 day injured list, the 60 day DL, whatever you want to call it. And we decide to pull up Hoy Young Park because, you know, we do need some depth. And that's the one thing that I think we've kind of lacked in our organization is that depth. And I think that Hoyon Park, I thought about trading him, but I think I'm going to keep him like throughout the duration of this series because I do want a depth guy that I can kind of, you know, have to just move up and down when I want. And hopefully he can just stay there and he won't like, you know, get claimed off waivers if I do meet that three out of three uh, limit there. So now we hop into the White Sox series, and really, I want to check out Jimmy Pelko. And here's the thing. The White Sox are the team that we're likely going to com be competing against if they don't win their division for the wild card, if we're in the wild card race as well. So this is a team that we need to send a message to as well, like I said about the Angels. Hopefully we win the division, though, and we don't have to worry about that. But I am looking forward to seeing what Jimmy Pelko can do. Now, he's already in one start. And he's already 1-0, but he had a terrible outing. He gave up a ton of hits. But we still got the win in that game. But I want to see what he can do just controlling him. So here he is giving up a hit to start it out as that brings up Yanni Diaz to the plate in the two-hole. And he goes the opposite field as well. So Jimmy Pelko not looking good so far, giving up two straight hits as that brings up Jordan Alvarez to the plate, hitting in the three-hole, and he hits one hard up the middle. And that is going to get through. Jeremy Pena could not stop that one. And it's already one to nothing here. 
for the White Sox as Thompson throws the third. And now there's still no outs as that brings up Jose Altuve hitting in the cleanup spot. Ground ball up the middle, and it looks like that's going to be a double play. Okay, so at least we get the double play ball. Two outs here in the first inning now. As Pelco continues here, Luis Robert to the plate, hitting 286 in this young season. And it's just a ground ball to Pena. He's got 95 speed. Wow. I mean, he gets thrown out, but, man, he has power, speed, arm, everything. He is probably going to be one of the highest rated players in this game come next year probably. So here is a hit to start out to, on the bottom of the third inning, and Pelco got through three innings, not giving up another hit after that first run or that first inning outing, I should say. And then that brings up Diaz, who does swing and miss. So he gets his first strikeout of the game. Yeah, but here comes Jordan Alvarez up. He's one for one here with two outs, and it's just a fly ball to Thompson. All right, so he settled down a little bit, and he gets out of the first three innings. Only one run given up. So now we move on to the fourth inning. I'm going to focus just on Jimmy Pelko in this game, remember, as Altuve comes up, hits one right back to Pelko, and the throw is off. I'm not sure he would have been out anyway, and Altuve starts it out with a single here to start the fourth. That brings up Luis Robert, who goes to opposite field, and that one sneaks through the infield. So now guys on first and second once again. So that's going to bring up Steven Souza Jr. to the plate. No outs. Fly ball to shallow center field, and it's going to get down in front of Thompson. And look at this. Altuve is coming all the way home. We did not expect that. We would have thrown it to the cutoff, man. And it's going to be another run scored for the White Sox. It's two to nothing. So that brings up the next batter this time, who drives one deep to left field, and it's to the warning track. And now Thompson does get it to the cutoff man this time. No, he overthrows the cutoff man. He throws it to third base. Luckily, Robert was not paying attention. So that brings up Zach Collins with two outs, and it looks like he will swing and miss. That's actually with one out. So now there's two outs, his second strikeout of the game. So that brings up Travis Shaw, and he hits one to the right side, and it sneaks through the infield. 3-0 here for the White Sox through the first four innings. Pelko has given up quite a few hits in this one. As now this app, this inning does continue as that brings up Tim Anderson who hits a laser to center field, but it's going to be run down by Thompson in center. And Pelko giving up a little bit too many hits for my liking. Hopefully he settles down as we move into the middle innings. That brings up Alvarez, but he's not going to miss. That one was crushed. Home run over the bullpen. It's now four to nothing here for the White Sox. His fourth of the young season. And the White Sox take the four nothing lead as Altuve comes to the plate next as he is looking on the outside changeup. All right, at least we got out of that at bat. So now his four strike out of the game is that brings up Luis Robert who hits a fly ball to center. And it's gonna be an easy one for Justin Thompson. And now we move on to the sixth inning. As there we do pull him, we bring in Keenan Middleton. It was an okay outing, too many hits given up, to be honest. And I I know he's just a rookie, he's got some time to develop, but not a good, not a strong impression after being 1-0 and having a 2-12 whip going into that game. He gets awarded with the loss, gives up nine hits total. No walks though, so that's a good sign. So now we move on to the next series and just looking at what we've done so far, it's kind of been an up and down start to the season. I kind of, you know, that's kind of how this team is. We just kind of have these type of months where we just kind of slump and we don't really lose a lot of games, but we don't win a lot of games. We don't really go on huge winning streaks. At the end of last season was the last time we did that. And that's when we won 13 of 15 of the last uh, to end the season. And that was probably the biggest type of win streak this organization has went on so far, this franchise. And I want to see that happen again, to be honest. So now we move into the bottom of the ninth inning with two outs. And here is Carlos Santana, who just crushes one off of the right field wall. And with 22 speed, he will make it into second base. And now with two outs here, down by one run, Corey Dickerson is the last hope. And let's see if he can come through. So on the first pitch, he goes to left field, and it's down. And it gets to the wall. Corey Dickerson rounds first, heads to second. All right, so we tie this game up, and now the winning run is on second base. And let's see if we can get another win versus an AL opponent as the manager comes out, and he is going to pull the pitcher. 
But look who he brings in. It's Brian Abreu, who we used to have on our squad in season one. And is looking at, he's already appeared in 10 games this season. He's going to face his former teammate, Corey Lee, who swings and hits that one down the right field line. And it gets past Diaz at first. And it's going to get a runner in from second base. And Dickerson will score. Wow. That was a mistake by that first baseman. And Corey Lee comes through versus former teammate and Brian Abreu. And we get the win. Wow. Two to one here at home. Only five hits in that game. As you can just see how the month of May is going. Just up and down. Like I said, we went on a, a couple of wins in a row. Then we lost three straight. And now we're back on track with the win. But now we move on to the next series facing the Philadelphia Phillies. J.D. Martinez has signed with them in free agency. And he is three for four with Brad Hand looking to get the save in this one with a one-run lead. And here on a one-two count, he's going to get Martinez to go around on the inside slider. And now with two outs, that brings up Bryce Harper to the plate, who is 0 for 4 in this game so far. And on a one-two count, he just gets enough wood on that one, and it drops into center field. So now they have a man on first base here. And now let's see if Brad Hand can get out of this jam with Alex, Alec Bohm coming to the plate. And here he's two for three. He hits one hard up the middle. That gets past our young Yanni Hernandez. But look at this. He's rounding first, heading to second, and he gets thrown out. And that's how this one ends. Trevor Richards gets awarded with the win in this one. But wow, what a gutsy, just aggressive, too aggressive, of base running by Alec Bohm. And he cost his team that game. And he even went three for four with a home run and three RBIs in that one. And that was just not a good look as we just steal one away from the Philadelphia Phillies. We actually end up sweeping them. Actually, we won two out of three. And then we go on a little bit of a win streak towards the end of the month of April. And you can just see what we're doing here. We're getting some quality wins. We're also losing some games, but getting some quality wins as we end the month of April, 17 and 12. And you can just see what we've done here. We did win three out of four from the Texas Rangers. We won two out of four from the Angel or from the Cleveland Indians, and then split at the end of the month versus the Angels. So now to start the young season, we are on top of the division only by a half game, but encouraging to see us at least get off to a decent start and be in first place. So I'm encouraged going forward. Just looking at our team, though, Tim Beckham's hitting 341 off of the bench. Corey Dickerson's hitting 287. That's pretty good for him. Jake Cave's hitting 283. Jimmy Pena's hitting 271. Moncada started out slow a little bit. He's got that average up to 267. But Nate Barron is hitting pretty disappointingly. He's hitting 244, and so is Tapia. I hope that they can get right. But the guy I'm most disappointed with is Carlos Santana and Corey Lee. Both of those guys are hitting below 240, so hopefully they will clean that up as Justin Thompson is also off to a rough start so far, hitting around 200. So in the rotation, Joe Musgrove is on a tear. 4-0, .84 whip, 177 ERA. He has been straight masterful. 33 strikeouts to four walks. Can you believe that? That ratio is ridiculous. And then looking at Pelko, he did settle down a little bit. That whip has come down. He's 2-1 and one on the year. He ended up getting one more win after that game we showed earlier. Alex Wood is off to a slow start, though, 1-3. and three. Of course, when you sign Musgrove, Alex Wood goes cold. And then Teddy Palatitis is off to a pretty good start. He's only 1-3, and three, though, but I like his pitching numbers. 27 strikeouts, 11 walks, 1-2-0 whip. But this is how we start the season as we head into the month of May. Next episode, I want to get to the draft. So I want to see how that will go as this is kind of more of a favorable, favorable schedule here in the month of May. The, at least the beginning of our schedule is a little easier. It kind of ends a little tougher playing the Minnesota Twins, who are the defending national or the world champions. And we'll see how we do against them. So hit subscribe, hit that like button, stay tuned. Let's get it. Let's go. Yeah, hey, filling out these job applications. Life got hard after high school graduation. I went to college and your boy got financial aid. They gave me money, then I went and bought a pair of J's. And I bought a pair of shades. And I bought a new computer. Half a hundred dollars left. Spent the rest on.